In this section, we're going to take a look at the required JS library and how that can help you when using Backbone JS and other JavaScript libraries. Now, this section isn't specific to Backbone JS, but I wanted to include it because you'll see as you're working with larger and larger applications in JavaScript that you may want to employ a library like RequireJS. So essentially, what problem are we trying to address? Well, websites are really turning into web apps, and specifically, they're turning into these single page applications. And that's why we're looking at using frameworks like Backbone.js to give us more um, separation between our code, between our views and our models and our collections. Um, but as these apps um, get larger and larger, they the code becomes more and more complex. Um, you've seen uh, with just the real basic examples that we've written uh, for this course um, that the, the code gets longer and longer, it gets harder to find what we're looking for. And so what we really want to do is we want to break it apart into discrete modules that we can load um, dynamically. And it's getting harder to assemble these if we break it apart. So we need some way to um, bring them together and optimize them uh, for when we put them up on the on the web. So essentially what we need is some sort of way to include or import or require certain libraries to be loaded uh, dynamically for our application. And we need to have this ability to um, load our different dependencies in the correct order. Um, as you recall, we needed to have jQuery loaded first before we, inst we could have um, Backbone um, loaded, but we needed underscore was a dependency, and so we needed to have that higher up in our, um, in, our, uh, in our include statement. And so we need to manage these dependencies, and that gets harder and harder as our apps grow larger. And then lastly, we need some way to optimize all of this code so that um, we make less HTTP calls. We can load one giant JavaScript file um, into our application and not make 20 different um, HTTP calls because that, especially for mobile, that's going to run down our batteries. Uh, so those are the things that RequireJS is trying to uh, solve. And it does it through a method called asynchronous module definition or AMD. Now, this is uh, not exclusive to the RequireJS library. There's other libraries out there that do this, but um, RequireJS is very popular, so I wanted to focus on that uh, for this course. So what does your directory look like once you uh, implement uh, RequireJS with a Backbone project and start breaking things apart? Well, essentially, it looks a lot like the way we've um, split up our different modules. We've got our collections, we have our models, our views, um, we have a router.js file that has our router code. We've separated out all of our templates. And as you can see, it's really nice way to organize our code. Uh, we could have some of our designers working on templates while our developers are building out our router and our models and collections. So essentially, what is our code structure going to do? We're going to break apart our Backbone.js into modules. We're going to define what dependencies we need. And then we're going to set everything up with uh, a file called main.js, which is what we'll, we'll use to sort of bootstrap and define all the libraries that we're going to need. Uh, we'll then want to initialize our app. And inside of that app initialization, we might want to do something like initialize our router, which then kind of kicks everything off for our application, as we've seen before. But let's go over and take a look at the code, since that's going to probably make a lot more sense to see what the code looks like. So I'm going to go in here, and the first thing I'm going to do is open up our index.html. And what you'll see here is we are um, defining just a single script tag, which points to our required JS library. And then inside of that, we're defining a data main. And this is where we point to our main JS file. Now, you'll notice we don't say main JS. We say J into our J we point to our JavaScript folder, our JS folder, and we point to a file called main. So I'm going to open up our JS folder there and open up main.js. And so this is the beginning. This is where we actually configure our application. We're setting our base URL, and then we're pointing our paths to some different libraries. 
Now in some situations you could point to uh, an actual CDN if you wanted, um, but in this case I'm actually putting all of my libraries into a libs folder uh, so that I can compile them together uh, for my application and optimize them. We've got our underscore library, our backbone, and we're also pointing to our templates folder as well as defining uh, an app.js file. Now underneath this, uh, underneath our paths, we've got something called a shim. Now, uh, not every JavaScript library complies with the way that RequireJS um, needs to have the modules defined. And uh, so to get around this, um, they've, defined, they've uh, instituted this thing called a shim, which allows us to actually uh, define what underscore is going to be. We want it to be the actual underscore symbol. And then we define backbone as being uh, the word backbone, and we set its dependencies as underscore and jQuery here inside of this shim. So that's how we actually um, get backbone to work with RequireJS. And then down, by here, down here at the bottom, we actually um, call our first function, which is we're requiring jQuery and our app um, JS file, and then we're calling app.initialize. Now, if I jump over to app.js, uh, inside of there, we'll see that we have an initialize method or initialize function that we're calling. And all we're doing inside of that is initializing our router. But in order to initialize that router, we need to to define what libraries we want to include. So we're including jQuery, underscore, backbone, and our router.js file. And now if I open up our router.js file, we can see we're starting to define additional um, libraries beyond just jQuery, underscore, and backbone. We're including our home view, our wine add view, and our wine collection here. And when we go down, into our initialize method which we're calling on our router, we actually define our wine collection and we pass that into our app router method down here at the bottom. And then that simply gets passed in as an option for our collection and we can then pass that into our different views. So right now this part should look pretty similar because this is exactly the router code that we had in that one giant um, index file that uh, we were working with during the course. But I've broken up our router. I've done the same thing with our collections. If I go into the wine collection, you can see I've defined that it uses backbone underscore, and it also uses the wine model. So I'm passing all of those into my function, and then they become available inside of this method. And we always want to return whatever our module is we're creating. So if we're creating a wine collection, we want to define what that wine collection is and then return it back. We do the same thing inside of our, our wine model. We define what the model is, uh, what its dependencies are, and then we return that, uh, that wine model so we can actually declare a new instance of that model uh, inside of our views. And then if I go down and open up our home view, Again, this is the exact same code that we've walked through in our lesson. The only thing we've done is we've broken it apart into its own JavaScript file. And here I've got our dependencies. Uh, this part is probably a little new to you. When we actually pull in a template, we use another library that comes with require.js called uh, text.js, and we can grab that. Um, it's right here uh, inside of our root folder. So I'll go ahead and just grab text, and I'll do an an exclamation point and then that points to my template directory and that's basically saying just go and grab the uh, the text out, out of this HTML file and use that for our template. We then pass that home template as well as uh, our wine list view inside of our um, function and then we can use those the same way we did uh, in our previous lessons and of course we're returning our home view uh, for use inside of our app. Now if I go down and look at our templates, you can see our home template is exactly the way it was before. No changes there. And if I go into our wine list view, again, very similar to the home view, we're passing in jQuery underscore backbone as well as our wine list template. And we're going in here and rendering it exactly the same way and returning it into our list view.
And so now I want to go ahead and I've uh, I've got the stack mob server in here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch that inside of uh, inside of here. So I'll start the and now if I go back to uh, our terminal, you can see that when I hit the local host. It's doing many HTTP calls. It's hitting require JS. It's pulling in jQuery. It's pulling in my router, my underscore library, home view, my collections, my models. It's pulling everything in here. But you can see this is a lot of HTTP calls that are being done just to load this page one time. So what require.js adds on top of this is a, a way to optimize our library. So what I've done is I've um, I've taken all the code from my require.js folder and I've moved it into another folder called Re require.js optimizer. And inside of there, I've uh, downloaded a library called r.js and this is our optimization library. And I've added one additional library inside of my JavaScript folder called app.build.js. And inside of here, I declare uh, what my app directory is going to be, which is one level up, what the base URL is going to be, um, where I want to output my new build of my app, and then all my paths and my shims, as well as what is going to be the final name of the module that I'm compiling everything to. So what this is going to do is it's going to take all of my JavaScript libraries, all my templates, it's going to minify it, it's going to package it, and put it into one file called main.js. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to the terminal now, and I'm going to quit out of the Python server, and I'm going to go into another directory here. Sorry. And I'm going to go into uh, require.js uh, optimizer. And I'm going to go into my uh, require.js folder. And I'm going to go into one more directory. I'm going to cd into the JavaScript directory. So now I'm in the same folder that has my app.build.js file. And what I want to do is I want to use this build tool and I want to use Node.js on my local, local um, machine here to call uh, this RJS file and optimize my code and output it uh, using the, the app.build.js um, configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that bit of code right there. So I'll copy that. And I'll come into my terminal here. I'm going to paste it. And uh, it runs. And you can see that it's going through and it's collecting all of my files. And it says it's uglifying them. It's, it's minifying them and it's grabbing all of my uh, templates and uh, all of my backbone code. And now uh, when I go back into my library, uh, there's a, a new directory called app directory. Dot build and inside of this it's got all of my files copied but to be honest the only file that I really need now is my main.js uh, along with um, my index and my require js library all the other files don't need to be used because I've actually included them all inside of this one main.js file if you actually scroll over to the right you can start seeing that we've got things like our models defined inside of here, our collections. Uh, we'll start to see our templates inside of here. So all of this code has been thrown into one directory. There's our template right there being defined. And so uh, when I run this uh, inside of the Python server, uh, you actually only see one HTTP request. So let's go ahead and try this. So I'm running that and now I'm going to do a refresh here, and you'll see it only makes a, let's try that one more time, and you'll see it only makes one call here to, to actually load require JS. Uh, that then loads main JS and all of my files come down in one single call. So that's optimizing. Uh, 
and helps you deploy your code. You don't need to optimize it every time you want to look at your app. You can keep build, you can keep developing uh, with all of your code separately, but when you're ready to deploy, RequireJS gives you a very easy way to optimize your code, um, build it, and deploy it to your servers.